All right, let's talk about the micron gauge a little bit. Now I'm going to power the unit up. It's doing a self-calibration. And you notice it comes up with a high P. That stands for high pressure. So what we're measuring right now, even though it's no indication, is that we're measuring microns of air pressure. And we already know that the air pressure, being at 14.7 PSI at sea level, we are measuring 760,000 microns of pressure on the gauge. This unit will measure between zero and 25,000 microns. So when you're pulling a vacuum, it will not show up a reading until you get down to 25,000 microns. And then at that point, it'll just go on down. Zero will be a perfect vacuum. Of course, you're not gonna reach that because, you know, you cannot get a perfect vacuum here on Earth. And, and when we're doing an evacuation on a unit, like a mini split, we're looking at a minimum of 500 microns. So we're pulling this here microns from 760,000 all the way down to 500. And by the time when you get through pulling it down, you will have 0 0.0097 PSI of absolute pressure in, that, in the lines. So that is a very, very low pressure. Another thing that, uh, just going through it real quickly, it, not only can it measure microns, but it can, uh, it can measure other units of uh, pressure that we've, most of them we've already covered. So we can look that we can see PSI. If you wanna see how much pressure is in the system, so you can switch over to that. You can see what your inches of mercury are. And now we have a Pascal, we have millibar, we have millitor, we have millimeters of mercury, and then finally, we're back to microns. Okay, now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this compound gauge, and we're gonna take that micron gauge, and we're gonna hook it up to a recycling tank. The recycling tank is gonna simulate a unit, like a mini split. And we're gonna do a time amount of uh, pulling a vacuum on that tank, and then we're gonna compare and we're gonna look at our vacuum gauge and we're gonna look at our micron gauge. So let's get started and let's go through the hookup on that so I can show you what we're doing. Now one of the first things you wanna do before you pull a vacuum is to ensure that your vacuum pump is in pretty good condition. You wanna be able to make sure that it can pull down to a deep vacuum. If your oil hasn't been changed in a while, then it's a good idea to go ahead and change your oil. And also what we're gonna do is I've hooked the micron gauge up to see what kind of vacuum can we pull? If we can pull down to 50 microns or less, then we know that we are pretty good with our pump. So let's go ahead, we'll turn it on, we'll let you see that. And as you can see, we've pulled down pretty good here. So we know our vacuum pump is in good shape. All right, now here's our recycling tank. Now when you buy a recycling tank, it's gonna be typically filled with nitrogen. So we're gonna take the plug off here and we're gonna let the nitrogen out. Okay. So now all of the nitrogen is out. Now before we can put a refrigerant back in here, we need to remove the air that's inside the tank. Okay, now a hose uh, is not gonna, from our refrigeration gauge manifold set, it's not gonna fit on here. So what we need is we need an adapter. So we're gonna screw an adapter on there. And then we're gonna just snug it up a little bit. And that's all we need. Now, this here is a valve core removal tool. Now, if you go back, if you look at the videos that I did on the mini split, I actually used two of these. Now, I'm gonna use one of these because I had a lot of questions about the valve core removal tool, and I used two. The other one was only to isolate the micron gauge so it wouldn't be having all this excess pressure on there. Over here on the side, this is where we're gonna be hooking up our micron gauge. Now I don't have to worry about two of these valve cores removal tools because we don't have the pressure in here. 
like we would in a mini split once we open up the open the service valves up on it. Look inside, you can see that it'll come with a Schrader valve inside. Now what I like to do is to take that valve core and move it, take it out. So we're gonna take this part of the tool, we're gonna remove it, and it has a valve core extractor tool. You can see right there on the end of it. And we're gonna put it right down in there And we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that valve core and we're going to remove it. Now the reason we're doing this, which is always a good idea if you're evacuating a system, is you want to have very low restriction. So we're going to take it out. And speaking of restrictions, as we were just talking about the Schrader valve, it's always a good idea also to use vacuum rated hoses like this one is rated down to 20 microns. The hose is bigger. This is a 3 8 hose with quarter inch fittings on it. So this here, again, will give you a faster evacuation with a deeper vacuum. Uh, in this demonstration, we're not gonna be using that. I'm just gonna be using the hoses that comes on the, line, uh, the refrigeration gauge set. Well, now we look at the tool, we can see that we have a handle up here. If you look down inside, you can see that it opens all the way through. Mm -hmm. And this is a ball valve. Now, if I blow, if I put my finger on here, you can see it goes through, and there it won't. Okay? Now, this part is going to be going to your system that you're going to be evacuating. This is going to be going to your vacuum hose, or going towards your vacuum pump. Now, what will happen if I close this off, what is going to happen to here? So, you can see, here's my vacuum hose. No air is going to come out here. None is going to come out here. However, from this side, that is going to go to your system You can see that we have an airflow, okay? And that's with the handle closed. All right, so now we got the inside of this thing all figured out. All right, now let's, uh, while we're talking about the valve core removal tools, let's uh, answer another question. Uh, one of the questions I got is, why couldn't you just use one valve core removal tool? Now this one here, this one is a 5 16 And as you can see, it has a, has a violet body, has a 5 16 fitting. The, on a mini split, you'll find that the fitting that you're going to be connecting to on your service valve is going to be a 5 16 versus the uh, AC units, heat pumps, like say for your home split units, they're going to have a quarter inch fitting. And that's where the black fitting was that we looked at a little bit earlier. Now, let's say, let's say that um, you just want to use one. All right, so now let's say that you're going to take your vacuum, uh, your micron gauge, and you're going to hook it up. So, this is going to be going to your unit, or this, this right here, and then this side right over here, of course, you know, you're going to have your valve core removal tool that's going to be in here, and so what you're going to do is you're going to take, that's going to be screwed in there like that, and so you're going to take him off, and this will go to your unit, now you're going to be hooking up say you're a pressure tester or you know you're going to do a nitrogen test or you're going to your vacuum pump okay so let's assume let's assume that uh, that you're going to put your micron gauge on here now i've already removed the schrader valve out of here as i talked about earlier for restrictions but we're going to also talk about it what if you decide you want to just keep the schrader valve in there so there you go there's your setup all right, so you open your valve. Uh, let's, say, let's say at this point you're doing, um, you did your pressure test, goes through. But now here's the thing, here's the thing about it. Some of these micron gauges can be damaged with the high, you know, with the high pressure when you put your nitrogen in 200, 250 PSI. And this particular model, I don't know what the maximum pressure is. So I put a second 
unit up here, the second valve core up in here to isolate this here gauge from that pressure. So if you look at the video, you'll see that. So that was one reason. Now another reason is what happens, uh, let's say that you got, your, you got your nitrogen in, everything looks good, you're getting ready to do your evacuation. So you hook up your vacuum pump. Now when you hook up your vacuum pump, you pull the air out, everything looks good, right? Everything is good. Now you say, okay, now I'm going to close off my handle and now, that, now I can't get the vacuum, it won't go through this way, right? However, if you look at the handle here, you can see that this port is on, this port right here is on this side of the handle. So there is still an opening between here and here, between these two, this port and this port, going to your unit. Well, okay, that's good. You can still read your pressure. You can see what your vacuum pressure is inside in microns. All right, so now you're going to say, all right, I'm good. I'm going to go ahead. Now I need to just go ahead and take this thing off. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to start to, say, unloosen this, take it off, and as soon as you do, while it's under a vacuum, then you're going to have atmospheric outside pressure. Now it's going to go past your fitting and right into your system. Now you got air back in there. Now you can do the same thing. You can say, well, all right, well, I got my Schrader valve. Now let's say if I didn't have a Schrader valve here, I took this off, well, guess what? Now the air is coming in here, and now it's going to go right back into your system again. Even if you have a Schrader valve up here in this test port where your micron gauge is hooked up, as soon as you start to loosen this fitting, air pressure is going to start to go by because you cannot turn this thing fast enough not to get any air pressure in there. When I use a second valve coil removal tool, which has a quarter inch fitting because you see it's got the black uh, body, that will just screw right up here on top of the test port. So when I screw that on the test port, even with this valve here closed, I'm still going to have pressure coming to here, but I can still turn it and isolate my gauge from that. So I can turn that off, so I can protect my micron gauge from the high pressure, say from the nitrogen. Before you start taking all this stuff off, do it while it's under uh, refrigerant pressure because it's better to have it pushing out than it is trying to have an air coming back in. So even when you start screwing these things off, you might lose a little bit of pressure, refrigerant pressure, but it's going to be negligible. It's, that's better than trying to take this stuff off while it's under a vacuum, because if you do, you are going to allow air to come back into the system. So, okay, so that's just a safeguard. So that's the, that's the reasons why I use two valve core removal tools. So now we're going to take this and we're going to hook it up to the tank. Remember, this will be going to, like to your system. Okay, now we don't need the extractor tool, so we're going to set him aside over here with our Schrader valve right there. Okay, now we're going to take our micron gauge. And we're going to screw it up to this port right here. Okay. Now, we're going to go over here. Here we have our gauges. And we're going to take our blue line, which is going to be going to this here compound gauge that we just already talked about. And we're going to screw that up to right here. Trying to make sure these connections are good and snug. Okay. And you don't need to be putting no wrenches on there, just finger tight. That's all you need. Now we're going to take our service line, the yellow line going to the center of the manifold, and we're going to screw that to our vacuum pump. Okay. 
Going to make sure the gauge is open, the valve is open here. Going to make sure these are screwed on tight, the plugs. Okay. We're going to turn on our micron gauge. And as you can see, it says high pressure. Okay, we're looking at the compound gauge. We've already talked about that. This is the left gauge. It's on the refrigeration gauge manifold set. As you can see, we're sitting at zero. That means we're at absolute pressure of 14.7 PSI. I've already opened up the valve on the recovery tank, the low, si low side uh, valve that's on the manifold gauge set, and the valve that's over here on the vacuum pump. So we're gonna start it up and I'm gonna start the pump and we're gonna be looking at this here gauge. Now, we also, we know we have our micron gauge over there on the recovery tank. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna time it and I, I'll turn it back on once we get down to maybe 28, 29 inches of vacuum. And so we'll, let's get ready and we'll go ahead and we'll get started. So let's turn on the pump. Now I've already, I've just, I've already started the timer up as soon as I turned on the pump. And then we'll come back a little bit later once, once we get down to about 28 or 29 inches of vacuum. Okay, it's been one minute, 49 seconds, and it looks to me, it's hard to read, you know, the resolution on the gauge here is not that great, but I must say it looks like it's maybe 28, maybe 29 inches of vacuum. So what do you suppose that our micron gauge is reading over there? And I'll give you a, give you a moment to think about it. And I mean, according to this here gauge right now, it shows that we should be, we should be good, good to go. But let's take a look. Taking a look at our micron gauge, we're still at high pressure. So we haven't even got down to 25,000 of microns before this here gauge will read. So let's continue on with the vacuuming. Well, our vacuum gauge looks a little bit better. I think it went down a little bit more. And it's now been three minutes. Now let's take a look at our micron gauge. Make your best guess. 8,760. We're nowhere near 500. Let's continue. Now I know this has got to be all of the air removed. I think it even moves a little bit more on the gauge. Looks like it's close to 30. Not quite there, but almost 30 inches of vacuum. So what do you think? And it's been six minutes and 30 seconds. So what do you think about a micron gauge? You think we're there yet? Have we reached our 500 microns? That, that is needed for this here tank or for any other system that you're evacuating, that's the minimum. But if you go lower, that's even better. So let's take a look at the micron gauge and see what it says now. 25, 24. We're not even close to 500. Let's keep going. Okay, it's been about 41 minutes now, and I cannot tell that this here gauge has moved any lower. It looks about the same for the last, I guess, 35 minutes here now. Now, the thing about it is, you can see that this thing is marked in inches of vacuum, and even the pointer itself is just about the width of one inch. So we really don't have the resolution here, and we don't have the accuracy to be able to see these very, very small changes in, in the amount of pressure when we're uh, taking the air out. But let's take a look at let's take a look at the uh, micron gauge. So we have 871 microns on the gauge here, and we still haven't reached our minimum of 500 microns that we need. Well, I went ahead and I continued pumping it on down, so we got it down to 137 microns. Now, as far as the vacuum gauge over there, I did not see it go down any lower. And it took about 55 minutes to get it down to this here pressure. Okay, here's a chart that I did in Excel. And what I want you to look at is right at this moment, just look at this first row. Now you can see I had the headings, percentage of vacuum remove is zero. Now inches of mercury, gauge pressure, that's what we were looking at as far as on the, on the compound gauge. 
inches of mercury absolute, 29.92. That's our atmospheric pressure. Then we have the micron gauge. That is actually measured in absolute, so it's 760,000 microns. That's the absolute pressure. And then we have a tor that's measured in millimeters of mercury. Again, that's in absolute pressure, which is 760. And then we have our PSI, which is absolute pressure per square inch, which we see is 14.7 pounds. Now, what we want to really look at is when we start pulling down into these low uh, vacuum readings, and we're going to compare our micron readings against the inches of mercury for gauge pressure. Now take a look at this here column here, inches of mercury for the gauge. This is what we would be looking at on our compound gauge. Now notice that 28.92 inches of mercury, which is pretty low. Look over here to our micron gauge. Even at that point, we're only going to have 25,400 microns. And even then, we're going to have, an, we're going to have a pressure in there of 0.49 PSI. Again, this is absolute pressure. Now let's take a look at going from 28.92 down to 29.14. Now you can see that is very, very small. If you're looking at this on the analog gauge here, you would never be able to tell the difference. However, if you look over here, you can see that we dropped from 25,400 down to 20,000. Now let's keep on going down and look and see where we have our 500. Well, our 500 is going to be at 29.91. Well, our gauge actually seemed to show that it was way up there. So you would think at that point that you, you have removed pretty much all of the air. And then you, and if you look over here, we have the 500. However, when we looked at it, it looked like it stayed on there for about 35 minutes. You know, I could not tell any difference of this here gauge pressure looking at it. I was thinking, you know, well, it should be done, but until we get to this number here, 500 or less, then we know that uh, just looking at the vacuum gauge, as far as the compound gauge, we will never know how much air we have removed out of that system. Because the analog gauge, it just does not have the resolution or the accuracy that a micron gauge does. Okay, now let's go over what, we've, what we observe with the analog uh, vacuum gauge and a micron gauge. We see that the analog gauge does not have the resolution that the micron gauge is. In fact, the pointer itself was about the width of what one inch of uh, mercury is. So we saw that we don't have the resolution and we don't have the accuracy. We saw that when we got down to our uh, pressure of say 28, 29, looks like it was right there on 30. We let it run and run and run. And we say, okay, it's good. But when we looked at the micron gauge, we saw that we were nowhere near close to being at least 500 microns. Now, so in my opinion, you want to be getting a micron gauge. That's what you want to be using your, uh, to see what kind of air pressure is still left in the system. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, you know what? I just, I still think a vacuum gauge is good enough. All I would do is I would just run it long enough and I would just, that will probably take care of it. And you could say, well, I'll run it, I'm gonna run it for an hour. Now you saw I ran it for 55 minutes just for this tank. Now this tank was to simulate, say, a, um, I don't know, a, maybe a 12K uh, BTU unit. Like say I got it here in the garage and you can see that took 55 minutes. And I didn't have to guess. I didn't have to guess how much time. All I had to do was look at the microns. Now you could say, well, I'm just gonna run an hour and that probably be good enough. Now, that's gonna be a lot of variables there. First, you gotta look at what size vacuum pump you got, okay? You know, the bigger your CFM, it'll take less time. Well, look at your restrictions. Well, let's say you decide, I'm not even gonna bother taking that Schrader valve out, okay? All right, but look at your manifold gauge set. Look at all the restrictions that you got in there. So you gotta factor that in. What about your line set? Well, the bigger your, you know, the bigger your tubing, that's more volume of air. What about the length? Well, the longer the length is, that's going to take more time because you got more volume of air. Well, how about if you got a pretty big unit? What if you got like a 36 kBT unit? Well, your indoor coil is going to be bigger. 
which means you got more volume of air to take out. Okay, what about the humidity of the air? Well, the humidity of the air that's inside the tubing while it's left open, you got a pretty hot day and it's humid, that's more water vapor. That means that's going to take longer. So how can you say, I can run it for an hour and I am good, I know my pressure is down there? You're not. You're not going to know. So my recommendations is, and I recommend, you know, if you want to do this job, and it's not a bad job to do, you need DIY, I encourage you to do it if you want to do it. But why spend near $1,000 or more for a unit? And then you're going to shortchange yourself and say, well, you know, I'm not going to buy this, and I'm not going to buy that, and I'm just going to use my vacuum gauges, and then I'm going to rely on that. You know, now the unit I got over here for the micron gauge is about 350 bucks. Now, that one's got a lot of features on it, but you don't need all those features. You can get one for about 130 bucks. All you need to know is how many, how much pressure is left in that system. And that, you just need to know the microns. A vacuum gauge will t show you, yep, I'm, I'm producing a vacuum, but it's not going to tell you how much of a vacuum you are producing. It's not going to tell you about the pressure, how much pressure is in that system. A micron gauge will. And so for 130 bucks, you know, I think you're well ahead of the game. Now let's answer, let's answer another question I've got. Uh, some of them say, well look, can't I just pull a vacuum on the system and I don't have to worry about this pressure testing? That's a bad idea, all right? Let's say, for example, that you're going to go ahead and you're going to pull a vacuum on the system and you're not going to pressure test it, all right? Now let's say that you pull it down and it looks good, you got your 29, you got your almost 30 inches of mercury, a vacuum, hey, it looks good. You leave it, say, several hours. You come back, you look at your gauge, it hasn't moved a bit. All right, I'm good. And now you open up that service valve and you let all that refrigerant in. Okay, everything is good. Now maybe say a month later or so, now you see your unit's not heating or cooling. Well, now you know you got your leak. Well, what are you gonna do now? Now you got to recover all of that refrigerant. And are you gonna buy a recovery unit for several hundred dollars? Or no, you see, probably not. So now you're gonna be left up calling some person to come in there, recover that unit, and all that refrigerant, and guess what he's gonna do? Well, now he's gonna do a pressure test, which you should have done to start with, to find that very small leak. Now, if you go ahead, in fact, I did, I did a job on a vehicle, and I pulled a vacuum on it. I left it for 24 hours, and I just was using the gauges, wasn't using a micron gauge. I left it on there for 24 hours. I come back, and that needle did not move one bit. I was convinced I did not have any leaks. So I recharged the system with refrigerant. One month later, guess what I found? I found out my, my unit wasn't working. I wasn't getting as cold of air as I was originally. Then I found out that I had a leak. So now I had to recover all the refrigerant, then I put nitrogen in the system, and then I found a leak, which is something I should have done to start with. So don't rely on your vacuum gauges, even over a long period of time, because if you've got a very small leak, that gauge with the resolution on your vacuum gauge on the manifold set, it ain't gonna tell you nothing. Okay, so do a pressure test. Now I have questions about, well, where can I get this nitrogen from? Now where I got it from, or where I get it from, is from Air Gas Supply. This is a national chain. They sell welding supplies, they sell argon, they sell oxygen and nitrogen, and you can go there, you probably have one right there in your own town. So look it up. If you don't have a tank, it doesn't matter. You go to the, you go to the place, you say, hey, I want, a, I want a bottle, and they got them in different sizes, and one I got is like a 40 cubic foot tank. And what that will do is you, he will say, okay, do you have a tank? And I said, no, I don't have one. They will provide the tank and the nitrogen, and the cost was about 130 bucks, okay? Now, you bought the tank, and you got the nitrogen. Now, let's say it all, you used it all up, all right? Now, you go back. You, with your empty tank, and you say, "Hey, I need to get uh, I need to get a uh, tank of nitrogen." All right, so he'll take your he'll take your tank, 
and they'll give you another tank and it's already filled up and now you're only going to pay for the nitrogen which is like 25 to 30 bucks okay and it'll last a long long time in fact uh, the bottle of nitrogen that you saw in the video i was using on the mini split to do the pressure testing i still got pretty much a full tank okay so it lasts a long time so those two, those uh, questions there is the most that I get uh, uh, the most of. And I answered them in the comments, but I figured in this way, I'll just put them in a video, talk about it, elaborate, and then you can make up your own mind. So I hope, uh, I hope these videos have been helpful. These two videos, uh, I'm going to put these two videos up front, right in the playlist with the other three that I did for the mini split. So this way you'll have the information up front before you actually start doing the job. Another thing is I had a lot of comments about, well, how's my unit working? Actually, it's working pretty good. In fact, it's like 38 degrees outside right now, and I have the unit over there, it's going. I have it set for 70 degrees, and the temperature in here is 70 degrees, okay? And I'll show you that right now. And you see the unit's running, I got it set for 70 degrees. And as you can see, I got the thermostat over here and I have it set for the follow me. So over here is 70 degrees. So we are 70 degrees inside where I have this unit set on the heat mode right now. Okay, as I promised, and if uh, any of you still hanging around for, at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you this here little encounter that I had with mercury when I was in high school. Now I was about 17 years old and we were in the chemistry lab. And it turned out that the, in, the teacher he had to go down he got over a PA he had to go down to the principal's office okay so while he went down there we happened to notice that I looked over to the side and I saw that the chemical room was left open usually there's a padlock on there so you know nobody can get in there so me and another fella we go in there and we start looking around well we're picking up these different chemicals you know they're in the bottles and uh, I happened to lift up this one which was in a plastic bottle, and it was probably, oh, I don't know, maybe about three inches tall, maybe an inch in diameter. It was in a plastic bottle. And I, when I picked it up, I noticed this is just really heavy stuff. And so I screwed the top off, and then I poured a little bit in my hand. Now remember, this is my bare hand. And I noticed, and I rolled it around, and I'm looking at it, and it's... I'm saying, what the man? And then I showed the other guy. He said, let me have some. So I poured some in his hand. He's rolling around. Now we're just fascinated by this stuff. You know, it'll break apart and it'll come back together. It's kind of like on the Terminator 2, the metal man. You know how the liquid go off and then it all just bubble up, uh, join back together? Okay, so we come out of the chemical lab and we're starting to show the other students in there. So now they're amazed by us rolling around and they said, let me have some. So now we're pouring this stuff in each one of the students hands everybody's happy they're just sitting there talking about this stuff until about two or three minutes later and some of the girls start raising hell now this here mercury has coated their rings all the way around now their gold rings are now silver coated and they are not wiping it off either now they're raising hell cussing you're going to pay for my damn ring and all this other stuff well that wasn't the worst of it. And a few minutes later, some of the girls had actually talked about how their rings had crumbled into like four or five pieces. Now the rings have started disintegrating, going into, so I don't know what the mercury had done. Maybe it was uh, cheap gold-plated rings. Maybe it attacked and broke the rings into pieces. And some of the other ones, they stayed intact, but they were all silver-coated, the ones, the girls that had the rings on it. Now they're really raising hell. By this time, guess who pops in the door? Now the teacher comes in, everybody's raising hell. He wants to know what's going on. Now the story comes out. So he says, y'all stay right here. Of course, he takes mercury, locks it up and everything. Then he goes back down to the principal's office. A few minutes later, he comes back. He says, okay, you and you know the other guy that was with me, we had to go down to the principal's office. Now he gave us a big old scolding. And he's saying, you guys probably ought to pay for these rings. He said, but he said, being fair, he said, they were just as guilty as you by participating in it. He said, so I'm just going to let you go and just count yourself lucky. And man, that was, we lucked up on that. 
And uh, so anyway, that was my encounter with mercury because I had no idea that stuff is poisonous and toxic as it was. And, you know, even today, you know, people weren't uh, working with that stuff. They got all these gloves on, you know, they got a little respirator because the fumes is toxic and everything. So what did we know? Okay, that is going to wrap up this here two videos of this here series of a um, micron gauge versus a vacuum gauge. That's on a like on a manifold gauge set. I hope the information was helpful to you and now you know everything I know about pressures, vacuums, and gauges. So now you can be informed to make the decision that you feel is right for you. I appreciate all of you people out there taking in what, uh, time to watch the videos. If you like the channel, what you've seen, go ahead and be sure to subscribe and, and we'll be catching you guys in the next one. Have a good one.